Okay, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use bootstrapping in Levant to test indirect and total effects within a path model. Um, a copy of the data, it's actually in a CSV format. Uh, you can download it from this uh, drive right here. And I've already imported the data into R and created a data frame uh, containing that the data that was actually within that file. Um, additionally, I've used a library function to call up uh, the Levine program so that I can uh, carry out the demonstration. So first, before we get started, talk, let's look at the model that we're going to test. So this particular model right here, uh, we have mastery goal being uh, treated as a predictor of achievement. And within this particular model, we have, um, we have essentially two specific indirect effects that are being tested. We have an indirect effect of mastery goals on achievement flowing through uh, a mediator called subject matter interest, and then mastery goals on achievements flowing through a second mediator called anxiety. So each of the single-headed arrows within this model are considered uh, direct effects. And so you can see that, um, that basically, in terms of indirect effects, we have two of them. Uh, and we can call them specific indirect effects. So we'll just say that the specific indirect effect of mastery goals on achievement uh, flowing through the mediator subject matter interest is essentially equal to the product of paths A and B right here. So it's just basically A times B. So that's the first um, specific indirect effect. The second one uh, is flowing through uh, paths E and F right here. So the second specific indirect effect uh, is just basically uh, computed as a product of paths E and F. You also notice that we have what's left over is this direct effect right here of mastery goals on achievement. So after we account for those two indirect effects, we still have so uh, we're, we're still in this particular model. We're still testing whether uh, there's any uh, remaining effect due to mastery goals. So with that said, let's go and look at our um, our syntax. So this is uh, contained within a notepad. It's basically, it's a text file, and I'll make this available to you as well to download. It'll be underneath the video description. And within this file right here, uh, we have the basic model. So I'm calling this particular model model one, and you'll see I've got a little arrow. Uh, it's just a less than sign and then a hyphen. You'll see right here I've got an apostrophe at the start and an apostrophe here. And everything that falls between the apostrophes um, are going to be the model specifications. Um, in the lines that start with a pound sign, anything that follows that are being treated as comments. So there's a comment here comment right here and a comment right here. So now on the next line uh, we have the actual names as they appear in the um, the data frame. So I have subject matter interest it's just basically capital S capital M and then INT so S uh, subject matter interest you'll see a little tilde right here and the t basically what's on the left side is going to be essentially an outcome variable to to that on the right side. So we have mastery goals being treated as a predictor of subject matter interest and I'm also assigning uh, that path a label I'm calling it A. So basically we have in this particular case what we've laid out is we've given, a, given this path uh, a label uh, which is A. And we're also going to do the same thing for uh, path B right here. So we're basically going to have um, achieve which will be on the left side of the tilde sign um, and then on the right side of the tilde sign will be uh, B star uh, and then this variable right here. So that's essentially how it's laid out. So that's it right there. Then we have paths E and F. So I've got anxiety being predicted by mastery goals and we're assigning a label for that path as E. Then we have achieve uh, being uh, predicted by anxiety and in this particular case we are labeling that path F and then that remaining path C right here is math, mastery goals as a predictor of achievement. Um, in terms of the indirect effects down here you know I'm essentially labeling the indirect effects so that's A, B and E, F right here so these are just basically labels and then they're followed by a colon and then an equal sign so then you can see I've got A star B and then down here I've got E star F. Um, if I want the total effect uh, calculated you can see down below I've got um, the name of the parameter is total and then I've got uh, colon equal sign and then I have a C 
plus and then a star v plus uh, e star f and again we're ending with an apostrophe so that closes out the, the entire model specification on the next line I'm creating a fit object and um, you'll see that I'm calling it fit1 followed by an arrow then using the SEM function associated with Levine so within the parenthesis I've got model1 so that is the model specification right here data equals mediate so that is the uh, the data frame containing the actual raw data and so then I'm just asking for summary information using the summary function for uh, fit one and then I'm also uh, typed in fit dot measures equal true to get sort of a broader range of fit uh, indices on the next line I've asked for parameter estimates so this is another function capital E right here and so you'll notice that inside the parenthesis I've got fit one and standardized equals true and so with this right here I can get standardized estimates in addition to the unstandardized estimates that are presented above so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to go ahead and copy this and paste it into R and like I said you can download this and st study the download the uh, text file and study the syntax if you want a little bit more uh, time with it but basically as you can see right here we've got um, our information in terms of um, our chi-square uh, value right there. There's the degrees of freedom, p-value. You'll see we have our CFI, TLI down here. Um, down below we've got the uh, RMSEA, uh, there's the SRMR and so forth. And then uh, under regressions we have our path coefficients. So these are the actual labels for um, the paths and then our estimates right here in this column these contain the unstandardized path coefficients there are the standard errors for them z values and then p values associated with those um, now down below here under defined parameters these are the names of the of the uh, uh, the two specific indirect effects so these are unstandardized estimates along with their standard errors z values and p values and then there's the uh, total effect right there, the unstandardized total effect. If we scroll down a little bit further, you can see uh, under the we have our labels that are given. So there, there are our individual parameter uh, labels, and there, there's the indirect effects, the two specific indirect effects in total. Under the estimates column, uh, these are all the unstandardized estimates which we saw above: uh, standard errors, z values, p values, and then we have. Uh, confidence interval, 95% confidence intervals. Um, you'll also notice that on the next line, kind of scrolling down, we also have uh, standardized estimates. So if you want the uh, standardized path coefficients and the, um, the standardized indirect effects and total effects, that's lines 10, 11, 12, uh, then basically uh, that's uh, uh, these values right here. So at any rate, now let's let's try this out using Bootstrap. So what we're going to do is uh, I've just basically created the exact same syntax. I just renamed model uh, one to model two right here. So everything else is exactly the same. I also have created a new fit object. I'm just calling it fit two right here. Uh, so you'll see that we have SEM. Then inside the parenthesis, model two comma data equals mediate. So all that's the exact same. Uh, stuff is what we had above except I just renamed uh, the uh, model specification uh, object. Then I have a comma and then now I'm using SE for standard error so equals and then inside quotation marks we have bootstrap so this is gonna allow us to perform the bootstrap and then everything else is pretty much the same so I'm gonna highlight all of this copy and paste it in and it's you know it takes a few seconds to run I think it's it's around a uh, thousand bootstrap samples uh, by default and you have the ability to make a change on that if you want to but um, we're just going to stick with the default uh, that's given in um, uh, or that's provided uh, with Levine so like I said it takes a few seconds but now we have our results you'll notice that uh, it says number of requested bootstrap draws and number of successful bootstrap draws in this case we had a thousand each so the we have again our individual parameters the estimates are going to be exactly the same as what we had before the standard errors are reflecting the bootstrap uh, our, uh, procedure so basically the standard errors are reflecting our uh, function of the bootstrapping so the values that you get right here 
and those that you see above are going to be different uh, by virtue of the um, we're using the bootstrap procedure to, to arrive at those standard errors. So uh, you know, as you can see right here, our z values uh, that are given following bootstrap are uh, essentially a little bit different than what they were before. The main stuff that we were main that we we're focusing in on though are those indirect effects. So you can see here is the indirect effect, the specific indirect effect of mastery on uh, mastery goals on achievement via subject matter interest. There, there's our original estimate. There it is flowing through uh, anxiety, and there's our total effect. And the standard errors are reflecting uh, the use of bootstrapping. Under parameter estimates, we have the same uh, information that we, um, you know, had above uh, uh, that I just uh, discussed. Uh, but now, in terms of the confidence intervals, the confidence intervals are now adjusted uh, for the presence of bootstrapping. Um, so that pretty well concludes uh, this particular demonstration. If you want to know a little bit more about uh, Levine, there's a really nice article that you can uh, access at this site right here. So um, that pretty well concludes, it's, concludes this discussion, and I appreciate you watching.